drawing this small tower on the corner of a building in Vienna, I thought was a great subject for a quick 10 minute drawing. So I start with this center section where we can see through and decide to go up and down from there that I've got a reasonable chance of getting these proportions correct. However, I was very aware of time slipping away alarmingly quickly throughout this I really did want to keep it to 10 minutes. And in the end, I drew the tower, all the parts of the tower in 10 and a half minutes. And then I took another three or three and a half minutes or four minutes to add the leaves because I felt the tower looked a bit bare by itself. But I've sped the leaf part up just to a couple of minutes. So I'm trying to capture the effect of this architecture without actually doing every little bit of the detail. But at a glance, I wanted to feel that all the little components are there. And so particularly important for that is capturing the shadows and doing things such as capturing these protruding cornices that come up above the, uh, well, they're not really columns, they're, they're pilasters, these squared off decorative column-like forms that arch and hold up the cupola above. So I still have a fair bit of detail to do in here. This is probably the most detailed part that I'm going to draw and that's another good reason to start here because I'm going to be going a bit slowly anyway with my first lines so I might as well be doing the parts that I haven't quite warmed up to speed with and that do require possibly a little more observation to just understand how the detail is working and where it is and then when I am warmed up and I'm becoming a little more gestural there's less detail to worry about and I'm able to do more lines more quickly more accurately. So just finishing this center section It's always a challenge looking at these things as I do the voiceover thinking, oh, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that. Uh, clearly, I wish I'd lengthened this section slightly. It's, it's, a bit, it's a bit squat looking compared to my reference. I think the problem was I began drawing it clearly slightly larger than my reference, but I only went down then as far as my reference went down instead of taking it down further to allow for the fact that I was drawing larger. But these are the things that with daily drawing, we can remember the shortcomings of some of our drawing strategies for the next day. And we can be just slightly more on guard to check those things. Now, my problem with this section that I'm drawing now is that I drew it too large. And so while it, I think, looks okay on the drawing at the end, in comparison to the reference, it's a little overblown. And it also, on the left there, comes out too far over what I've done underneath. Again, if you look at the reference, it almost or really even sits slightly back from the edge. I've taken it well over the edge on the left and slightly over the edge on the right. And again, while it looks reasonable enough on my drawing, it really isn't a good reflection. And I didn't notice that till I was looking at the drawing afterwards. I suppose that's the shortcoming of a 10 minute drawing. We do cut some corners with observation. But of course, while I'm working hard to squeeze this into 10 minutes for the video, when you do this yourself, using the photo reference on my channel community page, there's obviously no problem giving an extra few minutes if you have the time available to just capture that extra bit of accuracy. And some subjects for some people 
require, require a little more time if we're unfamiliar with the mark making or the things that we need to observe for those subjects. And look, if you're finding this interesting, if you think it's helpful, then please help me out by hitting the like button. And if you're doing these daily drawing exercises, these real-time demos, then please let me know that you're doing them, at least some of them, as regularly as you can, and that will encourage me to make more of them. So now I'm just going up a bit further. And again, with this sort of thing, one of the important observational things is to be reducing the size is to be reducing the size relative to what we've drawn already. And again, what I've just drawn, because I was trying to perhaps draw a little too much of the detail, has now become too large. Now, that's not quite so bad because the section beneath is a little too large as well, but now the whole thing is a little too hard, is a little too large for that first section I drew with the archways. So it's looking like the hat is too big for the head at this stage, if you can understand what I mean. However, I'm blissfully unaware of my lack of proportion for the upper part with the first part I drew, and now I'm coming down. One thing I was aware of was that these curves that, that we see that we're drawing, that I'm drawing at this point, as we come down closer to eye level, they become less rounded. What's possibly more common is to draw from the, the base up, in which case every curved line or edge as we move up a rounded structure becomes rounder and rounder, becomes fuller and fuller. And so it's important that we remember that. But in this case, it's the opposite. I'm flattening my lines a little bit too quickly. And while that means it doesn't quite look the same as the reference, visually though, it just seems as if the eye level is in a different place to what it really is. But the consistency within the drawing means that the drawing is out of place. And then this lower section flares out a bit more. Again, I, I didn't really place that flaring out. It's now too wide. It really should be starting where the section above, where those arched columns section, it should be in line with that. I've gone out too wide on both sides. I remember looking to see how do those widths of this last section align with what I've done at first. And I can't understand how I didn't see it as clearly as it looks now. Goodness, this, this uh, demo seems to be one long excuse-making exercise, doesn't it? Now I have this round section this sort of like a almost like a rounded dormer window stuck in the base of the tower but we also have these leaves coming into view and so again i need to reserve some space for the leaves now these these leaves have quite a distinctive spray a mass of fine leaves on a small section of twig that branch off in a very distinct pattern. So I want to capture that pattern. Now I don't want to be having to draw every every leaf. So I, I do want to do some of the, the leaves or some of the foliage where it's thickest just with hatching. But for at least some of the leaves, it's important to create a very clear and distinct silhouette of the leaves and of the pattern in which they're attached to the plant, to the, the, the tree. And while it's not going to be perhaps be super clear seeing the leaves in front of this window, there is a visual distortion in the reference and I want to create a, a visual distortion in front of this window in my drawing so that we can understand that it's not looking quite clear because this branch just comes over the front. So we've passed the 10 minute line now and we're in double time or double speed 
drawing these leaves. Or maybe we haven't quite hit double time yet. We may be just about to now. I think I need to do a few trees for some of these daily drawing exercises because they are a particularly good subject for a quick gestural drawing because we really can adjust our style for the time we have. Now we are definitely in double time and trying to get a feel myself for how these leaves look. So the ones that are most individually exposed by the position and the sunlight I'm doing first and that's also helping me to establish how they look. And now there's a bit of a clump up here where I can just do a little bit of hatching and not worry about so many tiny leaves. But if we establish some very easy to see sections of the foliage and silhouettes are really important for this then our brain will see the parts it can easily see and it will presume that it's like this all over it will in effect it will in effect let us see things that we haven't actually drawn in parts where we've implied it but haven't actually drawn it and this is part of the principle of drawing the effective detail rather than the actual detail I have a playlist on this principle if you want to see it applied to lots and lots of different subjects whether it's crowds or architectural detail or leaves. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Look, I hope, I hope you are finding this series as much fun as I am. And I really enjoy doing the drawings and then making the videos. And I hope if you're doing them, you every now and then check the playlist in case you've missed some of them and can fill in the gaps. So I'm getting pretty close to being done here. I've gone back to the tower just to add a bit more darker shadow, which I think balances better what I've done. Is that it? No, there's a little bit more to come. Checking the angle there. And I think that's pretty much it. So look, I hope you give it a go. But whatever you do, Make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.